Hello, and welcome to the Daily Bible Podcast with Trisha and Michelle. We're just two friends reading through the Bible chronologically and encouraging you to do the same. You can follow us on Facebook or Instagram, Daily Bible Podcast, or go to our website, dailybiblepodcast.net. We are going through the one-year chronological Bible, and we will have links for that in our show notes and also at our website. Also, come and find our community group. Just look under Facebook groups for daily Bible podcasts. And if you are in there, um, I would just love to hear like what is maybe one favorite thing you've learned this year or one verse that has really stood out to you. Mm -hmm. Um, It's so encouraging to know what everyone is picking up and what God is speaking to their hearts. And it's, it's encouraging just to see different, like people go, I really love this verse. And it, it makes me look at that verse differently, even mm-hmm. though, cause then I'm like, what did I not see in it that they're seeing in it, you know, help me understand. And so it's, it's been fun when, when yep. people post verses and say that meant so much to me. Okay. So today we are reading Jeremiah 31 verses 15 through 40, Jeremiah 49 verses 34 through 39, Jeremiah 50 and Jeremiah 51 verses one through 14. So in the beginning, that first, those verses in Jeremiah 31, we see hope and restoration for Israel. So mm-hmm. at least I didn't stay. We're talking about God's judgment. <laughs> like we're starting out with some, hope, with some we restoration. We, well, I wouldn't say we moved on. We're on that part of the circling around. <laughs> <laughs> and then we see a mixture of lament and promise. So we begin with a reference to Rachel weeping for her children, which is a symbol of sorrow over the loss of the people during the exile. God, however, reassures them that there will be a return and a reward for their work, indicating that future restoration that we were talking about. Ephraim, representing the northern kingdom of Israel, is portrayed as a repentant son. God's compassion is moved and he promises to restore and guide them. And there's a theme of restoration that you know people are going to be coming back to the land and he promises to refresh the weary and satisfy the faint, signaling new hope. And I love verse 12 says, this is what the Lord of heaven's army says. This land, though it is now desolate, has no people or animals, will once more have pastures where shepherds can lead their flocks. And that sounds like really good. But then there's like a, but wait, there's more. Because not only will you get your land, there's even a bonus here. And it says, the day will come, says the Lord, when I will do for Israel and Judah all the good things I have promised them. In those days and at that time, I will raise up a righteous descendant from King David's line. He will do what is just and right throughout the land. In that day, Judah will be saved and Jerusalem will live in safety. And this will be its name. The Lord is our righteousness. For this is what the Lord says. David will have a descendant sitting on the throne of Israel forever. And those are verses 15 through 17. And so not only will they have their land and their shepherds and their pastures, but then there is that righteous descendant that will rise up. The Lord is our righteousness. Um, And so that's just so beautiful. And then we move into the profound passage that speaks of a new covenant with God God, that he is going to make with Israel. And unlike the old covenant, this one will be written on their hearts. And so signifying a deep personal relationship with God, all the people will know the Lord and he will forgive their wickedness. And then the final part of the chapter emphasizes the certainty of God's promises. Just as the sun, moon, and stars continue to exist, so Israel will exist as a nation before God and Jerusalem will be rebuilt and sacred to the Lord. And then we have a prophecy against Elam. So I had to look, I'm like, okay, remember, where, where is Elam? There's so many places we talk about. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. it's a, a region located east of ancient Babylon. And Elam is the ancient name for some of the people of Persia. And modern day, it's now Iran. The Persians were the first allies to the Babylonians. And then later, they conquered the Babylonian Empire. So the end of 70 years, there's going to be some other stuff happening Persian, spoiler alert, but the prophecy is spoken of their eventual conquest and fall. So the prophecy is revealed to Jeremiah during the reign of King Zedekiah of Judah. And then the passage, the next part, outlines God's intention to break the bow of Elam, symbolizing their power and military strength. So then, so it's saying, you know, 
Persia is going to rise up, but then God's going to conquer them too. And God Mm -hmm. promises to bring the four winds from the four quarters of heaven against Elam, scattering the people to all those winds. And the prophecy concludes with assurance that God will set his throne in Elam and destroy both kings and officials. But in the later days, God also promises to restore the fortunes of Elam. So that's interesting. But, you know, it's like, okay, there's going to be destruction in Babylon, but then Elam is going to rise up, but then I'm going to take them down. So it's just like all these things. And we can see through history, this is exactly what happened. And we're going to be reading about this in the rest of the Old Testament. You know, it's it's fascinating. And I guess that's a poor use of words. I need to come up with a different word for fascinating or when I'm like, this is so cool. But like we're seeing God's sovereignty, his indeed sovereignty over all all nations. Mm -hmm. He has ultimate power over all he's created. And we are seeing that. And, and what he says is about to happen is, is pretty big. So he's saying like, let's watch out. He moves from Elam to Babylon. And he is saying that a nation will attack her from the North and bring such destruction that no one will live there again. Like stop and imagine what that devastation Mm -hmm. would look like. No one will live there again. And then Jeremiah jumps back and forth between the destruction of Babylon and the hope for Israel throughout the rest of our text today. So we're just continuing to go on into that that cycle of this is what's going to happen. And then, oh, but this will happen. So both both of those, we see how the small remnant of Israel will return home. They will come weeping and seeking the Lord, their God. They, they will bind themselves to him and will remember their covenant. Just as Trisha was talking about that new covenant, they're going to remember their covenant. And this time it will be eternal. God is telling them to flee from Babylon because total destruction will be coming. And to Babylon, he wants them to know that because of the Lord's anger, they will become a desert wasteland. All who pass by will be horrified Mm. and gasp at the destruction, like horrified and gasp at the destruction. That has to be pretty bad. And back to Israel, God promises to preserve them. And again, there's hope. We're seeing hope. Then back to Babylon, he says, you have defiled the Lord, the Holy One of Israel, and God does not take kindly to that. In fact, he says, the sword of destruction will strike them. So these are the words we've read today. But for the people of Babylon, there will be no rest. No rest. The sword of destruction will strike the Babylonians, says the Lord. It will strike the people of Babylon, her officials and wise men too. The sword will strike her wise counselors and they will become fools. The sword will strike her mightiest warriors and the panic will seize them. The sword will strike her horses and chariots and her allies from other lands and they will all become like women. The sword will strike her treasures and they will all be plundered. The drought will strike her water supply and it will cause it will be causing it up to dry up. And why? Because the whole land is filled with idols and people are madly in love with them. And so God is saying, be scared, be really scared because he is coming like a lion from the thickets of Jordan, leaping in the sheep and in the pasture. And he is doing this because he is the Lord of heaven's armies and he has not abandoned Israel and Judah. He is still their God. And so what we get from this is that sin is mighty, but there is one thing that it cannot do. It cannot make God Mm. forsake those whom he has brought into his family. And that's, that's an amazing picture is that he can go and devastate the enemies, but he is still going to bring back his people. Yeah. And I think it was so good when it talks about Babylon, like nothing will survive total wasteland, total plunder. Cause let's think about in history, um, the hanging gardens of Babylon, mm-hmm. they're the one, one of the wonders of the world. And so it was like this desert, but they, it was flourishing. It's this huge kingdom. And we were reading yesterday about, they were so, they so controlled that whole area that even Egypt didn't even want to step out of their own boundary because right. Babylon had, so not only were they huge and flourishing and their ziggurats and their temples and, and the hanging gardens of Babylon, this would be like God saying like New York city is going to be gone. There's not even going to be like 
one brick on top of another i mean it's just like total destruction of something that big that amazing that powerful and that picture like when you see it in that way is that's total devastation Mm -hmm. it's scary it's scary because (sighs) i don't think that we can even fathom what this and 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 that probably was true for for everyone hearing these words they couldn't fathom what that would look like and um but yet total total devastation and destruction and it's so, not there yeah it's not there it's anymore it's not there so i watched i was um <coughs> joe and i back oh several months ago we went to the ark and we um we watched um while we were going through and touring the ark, there was a video on what life could be like after the flood and, and the rebuilding of civilization. And just watching that, like it just totally put into my mind, like, like, except for the, the plants that were slowly building up, like the world was totally devastated. And so that's, that's what he's talking about. That's what God is saying is going to happen to Babylon. Like it's going to be totally, totally wiped out. And you just said that it's like taking New York city and all of a sudden putting it down to ground zero, like everything going to ground zero. And, um, like it's big, it's, it's very big. And the people still did not listen or Mm. a few of them did, but they were still like, yeah, well, we don't know if that's going to happen. But Jeremiah did came true. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we need to take a break, hear from our sponsor, and then we'll be back with the word of the day. Stay tuned. Okay, so the word of the day, weeping, which is tearful, rainy, having slender, pendant branches. That's also Hmm. having Hmm. slender, pendant branches. And the synonym for weeping is, is bowed or bowing. Think about that. Bowed or bowing for weeping. Okay. And yeah, I could see the slender branches leaning over, bowing. Uh-huh. Yeah. Hmm, well, well, that's just your I know you're gonna lead us there, Michelle. So yeah, I'm gonna and so that's just the beginning. Yeah. yeah that's I'm the beginning lead you there. So we started today, we started seeing how Rachel is weeping for her children and she refuses to be comforted. And um, we also saw how one day the captives will come weeping and seeking the Lord, um, seeking the Lord, their God. Weeping, as we know, is a deep human emotion and it can be linked to grieving and it can also be linked to joy because we weep when we're happy, right? I mean, I think women do. Sometimes men, Mm -hmm. I don't want to say men don't, but we weep when we're happy too. And I found this this um, definition in the King James Version Dictionary. And it said to weep is to express sorrow, grief, or anguish by outcry. And um, it said to express, to like by shedding of tears to, it also says to shed tears from any passion and persons sometimes weep for joy to lament, to complain is also weeping. But what also caught my my attention when I was thinking about weeping was, uh, I love the weeping Mm. willow trees and well, the look of them, they are beautiful and they are whimsical to, at least to my eye, I'm like, Oh, the creativity. And I know some people who like things just so and shaped up would be like, Oh no, no, no. I, I like my, my trees with some uniformity. I like the willow because it's just, it just sort of seems to flow. Um, but this name, comes from the way raindrops run down its long leaves, Mm. making it look like the tree is crying. And actually many of the weeping willow trees, their name starts with Babylon or Babylonia, or somehow they are tied to that area of the world. But the weeping willow is therefore associated with grief and mourning in many cultures. Like that is a cultural thing. But as I said, there is beauty in the willow, just like there is beauty. There is something about a person who knows their sin and is willing to weep over it or to weep for others or to especially weep for God, even if they're Mm -hmm. just, I don't want to say even, if they're weeping 
for joy, if they're they're weeping for this emotion that has welled up in them, there is a heart that is beautiful. It's it's just beautiful when they're humbling themselves, seeking after God. There's tears in their eyes. But also remember at the very beginning, the synonym for weeping is to bow or be bowed. So there is that is linked to this extreme humility. And that's what we're see, we saw today was imagine the captives coming back weeping mm-hmm. and seeking after God. There's this, this, this extreme humility or this extreme sadness that Rachel was feeling because she could not find her children. Like they were gone. There's this grief. There's this bowing. There's like, God, why? This anguish. And so we in, in weeping, we see extreme emotions. We see the anguish and we can also see extreme joy, but there is this bowing sense to weeping. That, that's so good. Cause I think when we think of weeping, we think of grief and loss, which there's been a lot, you know, like my friends losing their son, there's been a lot of that. And so I thought like, when's the last time I wept? So there was the time, mm. you know, my grandma's declining and there's that weeping. We had a good relationship. She's mm-hmm. been a dedicated Christ follower. I, you know, as I were getting closer to losing her, I don't know when, like it might be two years from now. So I have no idea, but we could see this decline, but we still know that there's eternity. So there's that grieving. But then I thought about like, okay, what else have I wept? Like, have I wept in that mourning sense of God forgive me? Or, and I thought about like, yeah, weeping from realizing that sometimes I'm prone to, to wear myself out because I'm striving. Uh, you know, yes, I want to be the hands and feet of Jesus, but I'm also tempted to look at book sales. Oh, good. Mm-hmm. We made the bestsellers list this month. Or <laughs> how many followers do I have on social media? Mm-hmm. And so then I get overwhelmed and then I weep. But then in my weeping, like, it's all too much. I realize, like, I'm doing it to myself. And then that's where the humility comes in. When I'm like, oh, okay, just be be still and know that you are God. I need to turn my mind back to you. I turn my heart back to you. So sometimes in those hard situations, it takes that pivot of thinking like this is all too much to realizing because I'm, I have a problem. Like there's striving in here. I need to get rid of my pride or my striving. I need to turn it back to you. And so, but then we have hope. Like we can look back to Jesus. There's that, that hope we have. Um, Jeremiah 31, 15 through 17, that we talked about that that righteous descendant from David's line that will rule with justice and Judah will be saved. And it's a reminder to us that God is sovereign. There's a purpose in our tears. Um, you know, he was like, okay, this is all bad stuff's going to happen, but look at what's coming. This righteous one is coming. And so whenever we get overwhelmed and we like, I'm just doing things the wrong way. I have my focus on the wrong things. Then we could pause and like your way is sovereign and Judah can look forward to living under that righteous descendant of David. And we can look forward to like, okay, I just need to reconnect with Jesus. I just need to reconnect. And that is that humility, that bowing you're talking about that Mm -hmm. just like the willow branches are slumped over. Like, okay, God, you're just like releasing it and bowing yourself before him. And that's what the tears can do. It helps us find our beauty, but it's our beauty in Jesus. And it helps us find strength, but it's strength in Jesus. And it helps us find hope, but it's hope in Jesus. So these mm-hmm. tears, and and God didn't want them to weep just to weep, just for the sake of weeping, right. but to draw them to him. And I think that's the same with us. He wants the weeping, the repentance, the, the weariness, whatever it is to come to him. Because then he will say, look, look, here's the righteous one, just like I promised. Well, and what Jeremiah is prophesying here is that they're going to come weeping and seeking God. Mm -hmm. Like, and then the next thing that they don't just stop there. The next thing is they're going to be bound to God. Mm -hmm. They're going to bind themselves to God. Mm -hmm. So that's what we see through the weeping process is that, you know, we touched on it yesterday is that sometimes we have to go through pain in order to see the beauty even brighter than what it was. And so that's kind of what we're seeing here is that the weeping process causes us to realize some things in our hearts and in our lives that we might not have seen otherwise. Mm -hmm. And um, anyway, it's a beautiful thing. Rachel, will you pray for us today? Mm -hmm. Dear Heavenly Father, first of all, I thank you for weeping, even though it's Mm -hmm. not always... I mean, there's those sorrowful moments, there's those repentant moments, but our tears, um, it's like, it kind of like is releasing 
us releasing our pride and, and self sufficiency and allowing us to crack open to you and allow you in and to turn to you and to look to you and find strength and hope in you, Lord. Um, because often it's only when we get to those places of weeping that we will we will turn to you, Lord. I thank you that that was the same way for your people, that their weeping led to something different. It led to this restoration, this renewal of the relationship with you, Lord, this new covenant that you are promising for them. And that is for us too, Lord. I pray that whenever we're weeping and when we feel overcome with those emotions, that we will pause and like, okay, this is here so I can turn to you. And that's where the beauty comes, Lord. Help us in our weeping and help us to find you. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, we are sending you off with some daily encouragement to get into the word and be the hands and feet of Jesus. Again, if you don't have the one year chronological Bible that we are using, we have links to that Bible in our show notes. You can even find it in the Kindle format. Also in the show notes is a monthly and yearly schedule of the Bible reading plan that we are following. Tomorrow, we are reading Jeremiah 51, 15 through 58. 2 Chronicles 36, verse 10, 2 Kings 24, verses 10 through 17, 1 Chronicles 3, verses 10 through 16, 2 Chronicles 36, verses 11 through 14, Jeremiah 52, verses 1 through 3, 2 Kings 24, verses 18 through 20, Jeremiah 37, verses 1 through 10. I want to take a second here to thank the team at Life Audio. You would not be listening to Daily Bible Podcasts without their partnership. Go to lifeaudio.com. You're going to find other great podcasts to encourage you in your walk with God. And we will see you here tomorrow.